says we are live. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go live here and see if we can break the internet. You are live. Cool. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Bird Dog Chat with Ethan and Kat. This is our first opportunity to attempt to stream via the computer to both Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Oh, excuse no. me. YouTube and Instagram. We'll try and add in Facebook here in the future One at thing the at same a time. time. <laughs> One thing right. at a time. Some oh. of the big things that we want to go over this evening is first, a couple check-ins. And as people are checking in, we'll be able to uh, figure out if we need to make any adjustments or give up the goat, if you will, on everything. Um, if you can hear us on YouTube loud and clear and see us and all of the things, let us know. If you can hear and see us on Instagram, please let us know. If you're missing one of those two, also let us know. We would love to hear what's going on. Giving people a second to tell us if they can hear us and see us and all the things. Uh-huh. It says 5x5 five five on IG. I, I don't know what that means. Got you loud and clear. Perfect. Good. I Good. freaking Good. love it. This is exciting. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. So new year, new things, trying it all. Uh, if this is your first time watching us, um, well, it obviously is your first time watching us on Instagram, but if it is your first time tuning in to Bird Dog Chat with Ethan and Kat, we want to talk to you a little bit about how these uh, evening episodes roll we do some check-ins, see where people are listening to us from, um, people from all over the U.S. and internationally. It's really cool. Then we kind of go over some housekeeping stuff. We talk about our bird dog chat bingo, what the prize is going to be tonight, and how you can get an opportunity to win that, and then roll into <laughs> our announcements and or topic of discussion for the evening. So if you guys want to play bird dog chat bingo... All you have to do is become a patron. You go to patreon.com slash standing stone kennels and you get your bingo card by joining for as little as $5 on Patreon. And with that bingo card, you will actually be able to, oh, did he, th are you, uh, no, it's fine. Oh, it's Everybody's ready? good to go. Ready yeah. to roll. Okay. Um, if you look at some of the squares on your bingo cards, they are things that we will mention throughout the evening, idiosyncrasies that we do. Uh -huh. And if you get a bingo you get a chance to win. Well, not a chance to win. You get to win. If you're the first bingo, you win one of our brand new multicolored check cords. And what I mean by multi -check, multicolored check cords, that's kind of a tongue twister, is that our check cords originally came in orange and the neon yellow. And with enough requests and demands, we are going to add all of the easy lead colors to our check cord options. So you could get a royal blue or you could get a green or you could get a purple or a pink check cord. And then you also get to choose your hardware. So you can stick with the stainless steel option or change to brass. So those are the two options for the hardware plus all the colors. So if you win our bird dog chat bingo tonight, you will be getting a code so that you can go ahead and order one of those for free on our website. So standingstonesupply.com if you didn't right. know already. Now, some other fun things. These streams come to you ad free. We first of all found out that the ads were absolutely ridiculous. And if you're here, we want you to enjoy it and not be burdened Bombarded. by every 90 second advertisements, which is what was happening. So those are gone until after the fact. If you're watching live, it's ad free. We also want you to understand we're going to go over some cool updates, things that are happening at the kennel. Um, just general conversation about where we're headed with life and things. And then the second half of the show, we typically answer questions. So save those questions or better yet, throw them in the comments. Now we will get to them if we can. We try and pull as many as are possible and definitely give precedence to super chats or I think it's uh, a similar type process on Instagram. You can do some fancy schmancy comments or something to that effect. We will learn as we go. All of that being said, thank you to patrons, the large supporter of everything Standing Stone. If you are a patron or previously were, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, oh. Miss Kelly said that I look rested. Speaking of rested, I want to talk about something cool. 
for uh, my see. birthday or my for birthday Christmas Christmas my yeah. Christmas gift birthday is months ago okay uh, so this is something I know I'm instantly going to get picked on so I'm going to bring it to the forefront of the conversation before you all jump on me I got cat a a Christmas gift that I also get to utilize on a regular basis but in on in all honesty it was for her okay it is a mattress cover. That is individual zones to heat or cool the mattress. This eliminates a giant problem that we have fought for years and years and years. Either the room needs to be 78 degrees and cooking, and I am laying there with no blankets, dying because I can't breathe hot air, and Cat is covered up in sweatpants, a hoodie, a uh, uh, fleece over top of that, and under all of the blankets with a dog sleeping on top of her head. <laughs> And it's That's still cold. a little cold. excessive. Uh, it's close, okay? <laughs> so all of that being said, um, this is something that I'm also utilizing, but I just set it at zero. Like, don't affect the temperature of my side of the bed, please. I'll sleep like a normal human. But it's not... The, the cool part about this, it's called Sleep 8, and it is not just a heated mattress pad and cover. It actually changes temperature based mm-hmm. on your sleeping cycles and trying to help you get the most optimized sleep that you can. This episode brought to you by Sleep 8. Not really. We, we get nothing <laughs> but but good sleep, kind of. Um, we're working out the kinks. It gives you a report the next morning, which is really cool, um, that you can see you know, how much deep sleep you got, how much REM sleep you got, how long it took you to fall asleep, what your lowest resting heart rate was, um, it, and the amount of time you slept. It's really cool. And, you, and it will vibrate as it wakes you up, and you can change it to either cool or heat to help you get out of bed. Yeah. So, so it's really cool. It's a really smart sleep mattress thing, and we've been looking at it for a while. They've come out with a couple new iterations that this one is supposed to be drastically better. So um, all of those things worked out. It gives you a couple scores, one of which is HRV, and anybody that's tracked sleep or tried to be quote unquote healthier sleeper has seen that. And then another one would be your resting heart rate while you sleep and your breath rate, all of which are health metrics that determine how quality of sleep you can be receiving. The Let's use real words here. How high quality your sleep actually is. That's probably closer to accurate. Um, so fun fact from last night for you, Miss Kelly, is at the lowest, my resting heart rate dropped to 47 beats per minute at approximately 3.05 a.m. Now, it says here, the lower your heart rate is while you are resting, your resting heart rate. And I also checked, I was like, what is the level of accuracy here? And they claim 99.9%. So I'm going to go, they've tested this. Um, my lowest heart rate, 47 while I was sleeping. My um, HRV score is 102, which is basically the variability between heartbeats or something. Yep, measured in milliseconds. Measured in milliseconds. So 102 is really good. All of these things are chalked up to being very well rested in the morning. And then your breath rate is the number of times you inhale per minute while sleeping. Which mine is typically averages around 11 times. Yeah. And if you guys want to know, in comparison... Cat sleep sucks. She needs to work on managing some stress, I think, <laughs> because all, all of her markers indicate a high stress sleeper, <laughs> which is something we didn't know. None of us, not at all. Who had no idea. Who'd have mm. known? Um, but hey, last night I actually got my heart rate down to 52 beats per minute at my lowest. Rock and roll. My HRV was only 50, though, which. I think it says something like if you're not above a hundred or something like that, it's not super restful sleep apparently. Um, and then my breath rate was like 14.5, but correct. So all things things aside, yes, I feel well rested, feel fantastic. (laughs) That was a nice, absolutely amazing. So let's bob through some check-ins. Um, people are in and out a little bit more on Instagram. It looks like, but I will roll through some YouTubers. We've got Minnesota, Rio Vista, California, we have checking in from Hartsburg, Missouri, from Ireland. First international whoop, whoop. check-in happened real quick today. Don and Melanie from Otsego, Minnesota, Brunswick, nice Maine, Monk's Corner, South Carolina, Waukini, Kansas, whoop, just whoop. down the road from us. We got 
Miss Kelly Mack and Jax from New Jersey, Wisconsin. Latro- Not New Jersey, Wisconsin. Those are those are two different states. That was another from Wisconsin. And see how I put an accent on that one? Don't yeah. you know. Latrobe, Pennsylvania, South Dakota. We've got uh, Wisconsin, New Hampshire, Northern California, New York. Yeah, we're trying to get fancy in 2024. All the new things. Another McQuanago, Wisconsin. Have you ever noticed Wisconsin has some very... Indian. Hard to pronounce sometimes names. Yeah, yeah. Sure you betcha. My North Dakota is coming out in me a little bit. Uh, Aiken, South Carolina. Howell, Michigan. Atlanta. We're going to be seeing you guys in like a week, Justin. hey oh. Puppy time. Colorado Springs. We've got Rio Rancho, New Mexico. I always like saying that one. Rio Rancho. Fargo. Uh, Fargo, North Dakota. Another Fargo person. Two Fargos in a row. Two Fargos in a row. Are you guys watching together? Henderson, Texas. Central Missouri. Stony Creek. Hey, Angelo. Des Moines, Iowa. Minnesota checking in. Where else have we got people from? Kansas City. Sacramento, California, Fort Madison, Iowa, Springfield, Illinois. Robert, we're going to be seeing you this weekend, too. Puppy time. Okay, and roll. any cool places that people have been checking in on Instagram? Can't forget them. Ooh, we got a uh, hi from Canada. Somebody else internationally checking in. That's awesome. Uh, Parachute, Colorado. Hey, this is, I'm going to say Tina. It says 70 gun dogs, but I'm going with, I'm going with Tina. Um, where else are we? Loud and the the Instagrammers are going to take a second to learn the rules here. That's fine, folks. We don't see very many check-ins there, but we see a lot of highs and haze, and we can hear you. So, as we move through this, anybody tuning in on Instagram, we're going to try and make this a semi-regular process of once a month, and from there, we will keep you informed via the story post. You've probably seen those in the past and been like, "I don't use YouTube," but now we're here for you on the gram. Oh, we got Whistling Wings from Alabama. Hey. hey there, guys. Ontario, Canada, more international check-ins. Harrods from Oklahoma. I think you guys are on both platforms. You might be. Uh, Statesboro, Georgia. We've got... Like I said, this is Just a lot to keep track of. I can't wait until Charles is back so he can help moderate some of this stuff now. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sipping on some bubbly tonight. I'm not joining you on the bourbon, but I do have some excited. This is added Ooh, to the list. Oh, wow. added to the, we'll I just some, talk about it now. Some really segued. excited information. Excited. I'm excited. Exciting information about bourbon. Okay. First and foremost, we have the potential. This is something I've been working on for literally years. It's a difficult process, um, but the potential of a yeah, I'm hoping here. There's a sound and really promising or I wouldn't be talking about it. a private select barrel for the guy with the pink gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you heard that right. There's going to be bourbon and it's going to see privately bottled for the guy with the pink gun. It'll be a single barrel select. I get to help with that process. I'm very excited about this and it will be available for giveaways. I have to check the legalities on this, but I can give it away, I believe. Um, as long as people are of I better, age. I better figure that out before I buy a, uh, a barrel of them. But that would be a lot <laughs> to drink by myself. Oh, my God. Because oh, um, it would be by yourself yeah. because I don't partake nah. of bourbon. No, 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 no. Now, if it's so, a barrel of gin, is that a thing? We should get a barrel of gin. I don't know. Does gin come in a barrel? I don't think so. Well, it comes in a bottle when I buy yeah, it. Because bourbon is not is not distilled in a barrel. It's aged in a barrel. And I don't know very many gins that are aged. But maybe they are. We know nothing about gin other than the ones that I like. This would be Jefferson. We're looking at the potential of a number of different options. It seems like Jefferson is on the highest end of the potential list at this point. <sighs> it's going to be good, though. Okay. Okay. On to new things. Yes. Rem- reminder, get your bingo cards, be checking the boxes, and call out your bingo, whether you're on YouTube or Instagram, so that you can get your 
free check cord. So patreon.com slash standing stone kennels to get your bingo card. Okay. We talked about our check cords mm-hmm. and the new colors, and the new hardware on those options. And that one of them is going to be a giveaway. The other new thing, where'd it go? Where'd it go? That we have been working on for a while now, like months and months. And, and by we, Kat means her. This has been her baby. Yeah. So new treat pouches that are going to be coming very soon. We're in the final stages of production with Wolf and Winter, who has been like heading this project. Uh, they reached out to us because they knew we were looking for a new treat pouch. And they said, hey, we've got a really cool design. Try it out. Send us a sample. I said, ooh, I like a lot about that. But there's a few things I want to tweak. What do you think? And they said, we'd love to work with you. Let's make this the best treat pouch out there. So we've been working on some um, revisions and tweaking this thing, but it's going to be so awesome. So it's going to clip on the back of here. So you can clip it to your pants somewhere, pockets, whatever. Or you can wear it on your belt or Or use a belt. belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you could clip it to your belt. Yep. It's it's a really awesome clip, actually. Uh, We've revamped this clip a couple times. Then it is so cool how you access the treats. In and out. It's so easy. And there's no... And there's no zippers. There's no Velcro. There's no snaps. And the treats won't fall out because it gussets closed like that. So really cool. Lots of other cool features. And it's going to come in a couple different colors to begin with. And then we're going to see how much you guys like it. And if we like it as much as we expect we will, um, we'll add some more colors down the road. So those will be coming hopefully in February. Uh, It just depends on production time, shipping time, getting them in our hands and getting them on the Standing Stone Supply website. So Ah, some gins are aged in barrels, or all gins are aged in barrels. Good to know. Now you know. There are a few cool. barrel-aged gins. I need to do more research on my gins, I guess. hmm Any other new things um, that we were going to talk about? Because this is the new year, so we got to talk about all the new things. Yeah. Oh, oh, yep. You have a whole list. I, I have a list. Mm-hmm. So new videos coming up. If you have not found our YouTube channel because you're on Instagram, you should find our YouTube channel, uh, Standing Stone Kennels. It's pretty simple to find. Uh, We have a ton of training videos, and those have been created over the past, I don't know, well, some of the original ones, if you go way back, were like from 10 plus years ago. They're bad. Don't go back. It's bad. (laughs) Do it. Mm -mm. You can see Ethan with his 10... He had hair, guys. I you did. should go back and watch. Had hair them. and and mutton, mutton chops ch- and, and like these, uh, what were sideburns? Oh gosh! And I talked really slow and animated about the fact that I wanted to make sure I didn't say anything at all that could potentially offend anyone in the whole world. And now he has his Ethan's brutally honest comments. Look how far we've come. Or at least how I'm far he's I'm respectful, but I do say things bluntly sometimes. No, I know. I'm not giving you And you look exactly the same. You have not aged today. Speaking of not aging, this is a fun fact. Have anybody ever seen that uh, look at this picture and it turns you into an old version of yourself? You put me in that bad boy and I turn into somebody that looks like they just rose from the dead. <laughs> like, it's awful. Like, you are going to be an ugly old man. You put her picture in the same thing, and it's like, wow, there's a gray hair coming off of the side of your cute little ponytail, but you have, and you have one little wrinkle by your eye, and that's it. Well, filters, filters are false, so we'll see what happens in the next 30 years. How's that sound? Hopefully I get to. Okay, sounds good. But we have a ton of new videos coming out, and we have been rocking and rolling video production creation hardcore right now. So we have a whole bunch of videos with Trip, the little English cocker that he is hopefully in the next few weeks going to be rolling down to El Tesoro to finish out the season down there and gaining a ton of experience. He will be ready for it. Uh, He's been really impressive here and really flipped a corner, turned a switch and is doing really great. So you should check out some of his videos. Um, We've got a whole bunch more coming there in the backlog um, from editing standpoint. We also have another cute little adorable English cocker His named name Patch. Is Patch. Yep. And Autumn uh, is... Named by Aiden. 
Actually, it's kind of funny because Aiden it's, said, I think we should name him Patch. And then everybody has said, I think we should name him Patch. So it's just been the consensus, but it was his idea first. Yeah, and it just worked out. Lane really liked the name Patch as well. So mm-hmm. anyway, Patch is being raised by Autumn, one of the kennel staff here. And she's doing a phenomenal job with him, already working on um, getting him into a heel position and all of the clicker training stuff that goes right along with our online course. Uh, so that is something that if we have one of the people at the kennel raising a puppy for us, they get access to our online course. So we say, hey, we want you to raise this puppy exactly like we would be raising this puppy. So follow along with the course. So Absolutely. she's following along with the retriever course and step by step, he is right on track and they have links to check in with us weekly and schedule video, con- well, not video consults, in-person consults, but very similar to how you do it with Patreon. And sometimes people even set up those via the course as well. Absolutely. Where you can get check-ins and make sure you're on track. So Patch is doing great. He's in a couple new videos as well. And then we got Little Miss Pocket from the uh, Mako and Arlo litter that she's in a couple videos. And Isaac is raising her. um, And he's doing a great job with her too. It's cool because Patch and Pocket are only like a few days apart in age. So uh, seeing a little cocker retriever puppy develop and then a little versatile pointing dog develop almost simultaneously is really cool to see, um, especially by two of our staff that are following along with our course. Uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Then you have another puppy. Ariel. Well, she hasn't been in other than those two videos. We need to get some more videos of her. She, so. She's been in a video, huh? She's been in two videos and yeah. they were very important videos that we didn't really have. Um, you look at our YouTube it, are both of them up, or is only one of them nope, up? No, I posted both of them. Okay. The other one went up, I think, Christmas morning, okay. I think, or okay. New Year's morning. One of those holidays. Um, but Tessa is raising Ariel. She has raised a couple of puppies for us and um, is doing a great job. Including run them through... Their NA tests yeah. and... Got a prize one. Yep, and started Junior Hunter with uh, Journey and then got Bad stormed, the rained bone. out. So she's going to finish her up in the spring. Bad to the bone dog trainer right there. Yes. But the two videos that I was going to mention that Ariel's been in, which are really valuable videos. And you'd think that we would have created a video about this since we have so many videos on YouTube, but we hadn't. So we created a video um, on how to properly introduce a puppy to your older dogs that are part of your household already. And then we created a video on how to introduce a new puppy to your children uh, because we also have some of those, (sighs) just two. But they are still um, chaotic. If you guys are on Instagram, I hope you got to see the video that I posted of Aiden and Cade hooping and hollering, being crazy little boys, rolling their uh, new remote control car that lights up around in the area where our dog beds are set up. And we had Taylor, Nix, and Trigger out all at the same time. And they were so good handling that level of distraction and chaos and staying on their dog beds like good little doggies. So um, you should check that story out because I thought it was really funny. Um, Ooh, speaking of courses that we kind of had already talked about, um, Let's explain what our courses are a little bit more for people. So they are the versatile dog course and the retriever course are literally step-by-step, lesson-by-lesson plans that we've created from eight weeks to a year old. They can absolutely be completed by older dogs. Um, You just would fill in the blanks, start from the beginning, and move through the course um, lesson by lesson. But the cool thing about the course is that you get access to it for life. It's a one-time payment. You get access to the entire course all at once. It's not doled out week by week or month by month. If we make any updates and changes, like all of these new videos that we're filming with Trip and Patch, these two little English cockers, those videos are going to get added to the Retriever and Flusher uh, course. So you'll be able to get access to that new content that will have additional descriptions and other content that you can use, um, as well as it's laid out very organized, whereas... Sometimes YouTube can get a little, take you down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. But the new courses, because those courses are already out, but the new courses on the docket for this year are our whelping course, as well as our trained retrieve and steadiness course, which I know that those have been posted coming soon on standingstonesupply.com slash courses for a while. 
all this stuff takes time. Uh, the videos take time to create. The lessons take time to create. The organization takes time to put into place. But those are going to be coming very soon. The whelping course, we are actually shoot, we've been shooting a bunch of videos with Quest Slitter, the Quest Chief Litter, and that whole process, which includes an entire another whelping video, um, dealing with some issues like mastitis and extra supplementing that's needed to be done. So all of those videos are coming to a conclusion since uh, the puppies go home next Saturday. Yep. So once those all get completed and edited, I'm going to be adding those to our previous whelping videos that we've done so that you guys can get as complete a picture of the process as possible because just like every trained retrieve session doesn't go the same way, every time a female whelps, it doesn't go the same way. And so having as much information for people out there as possible that are trying to um, whelp their first litter make sure that mamas are healthy, puppies are healthy. That is going to be a great resource for people. Uh, It's not only going to include the videos, but it's also going to include all of the uh, checklists and documents that I've created over the last 12 years, um, from litter diagrams to milestones to check-in sheets. All of that is also going to be available through the course. Um, And then... And not that the other parts aren't valuable, They show the process, but the actual physical resource documents that are available make the process so much easier. It's what we've been able to allow, or it's what we've been able to set up to help our team to stay on top of it. You've got multiple people. There's always the potential for something to slip through the cracks, and having all of these pieces prevents any of that from happening. allows everybody to communicate, but also know exactly where the puppies should be along the way, which is what... The step-by-step course gives you. It's a, the, the checklist gives you exactly where you should be. Are they doing X, Y, or Z? Then you are ready for this based off of age and how to make progressions and how to apply the progressions to the size of litter even because that changes things. So all of it's there. It's going to be huge. It's definitely uh, been a project and one created out of love. This is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, Educating people and sharing our knowledge is something we've both been very passionate about. And I am excited for this course to be available for people. I don't want to give you a specific, it will be available February 1st or anything like that. But but it will. (laughs) Gonna gonna push for it, guys. I'm gonna lock her up here. I mean. I'll slide food under the door. It will, it will be um, a labor Wait, of love. Wait, there's a tuna packet over there. You'll be good for a week. <laughs> On one tuna <laughs> packet. Thanks, honey. Um, talking about the other courses that we've got coming up, we are creating NAVDA courses. That is something that has become very popular, especially in the um, versatile dog world, is running your puppy through the NAVDA natural ability test and then continuing that progression on to the utility level of testing. And uh, there... What does each test actually look look like? like? Nobody knows until you go and run and it sets you... Or volunteer at a test, but still, it's still not the same. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's different. And unless you get to be an eyewitness and the only way to be truly an eyewitness is maybe to walk along with part of it, kind of, but ultimately it's run a dog. And what we try and do is show real setups and real situations with real dogs in all of our training. And we've actually recorded and created real parts, mock parts of each section of the different tests so that you can watch. This is what it would look like. Then we talk about what the dog did right and what the dog did wrong, not how they would necessarily score. You need to go to an Ames and Rules clinic to be able to truly evaluate scoring yourself and then talk to the judge on test day. But All of those pieces will be there so that you can see what is it going to look like when I get there. Yes. So we're excited about that course as well. Um, The videos are shot. It's just, again, a matter of putting all of them into an organized fashion with some additional documentation um, so that that can be available to you guys. I would really like this to roll out early spring early spring so that you guys all have this resource that want it March moving one. in. T- I'll March. lock you up here again. Oh my gosh. Guys, I'm going to be like to- totally creating uh, but kind of not courses kidding. and yeah, I'm not going to do much else. It sounds like if you don't hear year. from Kat for a while. Come and check. <laughs> know where I'm the- at. <laughs> the loft. 
Um, so lots of new courses, which um, the other two courses that we created, we've gotten amazing feedback from people. Uh, somebody just emailed me and said, hey, I followed because the, ver- let me, let me just pull this email up because I love this kind of feedback. And we just got this this last week, which um, kind of made me want to s- talk a little bit about the courses here in this live stream. We get a lot of emails, so hold on. I'm looking for it. Not that one. Oh, here it is. Oh, why is it contrasted like that? I need to make it bigger. Otherwise, I'm going to have to have a bingo you card. You just need to turn up the brightness on your screen. Oh, that too. On the far that's, left, oh, that's, that's the, the volume. volume. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wow. Um, we're going to have to put a new bingo square on there. Cat <laughs> squints at the screen, which she doesn't usually do. So anyway, it said, hi, I'm just finishing the last step of your trained retrieve process in the versatile dog training course. So if you guys have been saying, oh, I really want the trained retrieve. Well, there are, there is the basic version of the trained retrieve course included in the versatile dog and the retriever courses. Um, I am going to utilize those steps as well as flesh it out a little bit more for the trained retrieve course. So it's kind of there. I just need to sit down and puke it out. But anyway, so it says it took us almost exactly one year and I've really enjoyed all the resources with almost an entire hunting season under our belts together. I'm very interested in starting the field steadiness course, which is one of the other courses that I've got on the docket. We've got the videos for it. Just need to put it together. I see that it is available for purchase, but that it still says coming soon. Do you know when it will be available? Thank you for all that you do. It has been a wonderful journey this year into GSPs and the Upland world. Happy New Year. So, um, like I said, really cool feedback. This is the kind of stuff that we get all the time, but it really segued perfectly into the plans for the courses for this new year um, and makes me really excited. This is the kind of stuff that when we hear about it and we know how much people appreciate what we put together, um, it just lights that fire to do more. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. We love hearing it. We love uh, knowing that we are helping people. Um, it's a big part of the folks that are here. We see a lot of familiar faces, and we appreciate the support. F- familiar names, because, well, some of them have little photos next to them. If you squint them. real hard, you can kind of see them. Yeah. Um, the last piece is, is drumroll. Guys, are we into 2024 yet? Does anybody know what that means? That means we get to keep a puppy. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm so excited. <laughs> He's so excited that he has said yes to a proposal yep, that I it's, made. It's, a, it's an interesting proposal. He said he wanted to say no, but he thinks he should say yes. So we can take a vote on who else thinks he should say yes. But we are going to keep not only one, but two puppies from the Quest and Chief litter, two female puppies, um, and because this litter has been phenomenal, and we've been evaluating them over the last seven weeks. They go home next Saturday the 13th, um, and I don't know how we can just pick one, so we're not going to. We're going to pick two females And we're going to shoot an entire video series on how to raise two puppies at once. Because as we've said for years and years and over and over, do not get and raise litter mates. It's a bad idea. It's a horrible idea. (laughs) Ethan has said it. It is, let it be, what is it? Let it be. So let it be written. So let it be done. Or whatever. Uh, I. Horrible idea. I want to show how hard it is because it, it, to do it right, and there's probably going to be somebody that pops on and says, I've raised litter mates my whole life. It's wonderful. They're great. I, I think everyone should do it. Well, you probably got the exception to the rule because raising litter mates is hard. To give them each their own time and valuable training and 
one-on-one time because sure it's easy to just let them entertain themselves and crate together and all the things but then they become too dependent on each other so this video series will in essence be talking about how you have to separate that and the pieces that you need to put in place to do that as well as they're basically and for most intents and purposes going to be two separate puppies being raised um one by me and one by ethan Now, Mm -hmm. there will be some generalization because if I'm keeping a puppy, quote unquote, from a litter, he's helping with things, vice versa. If he's keeping a puppy specifically from a litter, we're helping, like switching out on training sessions, generalizing that behavior. Um, You you shake your head like, like I don't help or like you don't help. I know. I'm shaking my head if we get two separate puppies. I'm Nobody's not helping. Help. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not, not helping, helping you. Yeah, I'm taking care of my puppy, and when it sleeps through the night and yours gets up, and which is not going to happen, and mine's going to be up all night. So, Well, they're litter mates, so they'll probably both be up all night. Or probably. Sleep all I'm going to have we'll to see. sleep in the basement for a while, aren't I? I don't know. I don't know. This is th- We have to think this process Lots through a little problems. more detail, uh, but planning on this process, showing the differences, and then kind of making it a friendly competition of, you know, milestones and check-ins and progress reports and Cat's dog is doing better than Ethan's dog, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, competition time. Uh Yes, running scores. Yeah, we'll have to have, like, uh, places for people to vote. Yeah, this is is back in the good (laughs) old days. The old uh, Vex, Grit, Breezy uh, breezy competitions and... uh, uh, we took it a little bit too far on a few on a few different days, maybe. Oh, uh, I can still remember the pond retrieves. Wait a second. Oh no, no, no. Charles Charles is getting one from the other litter. Yeah, Dang he it. has he has Dusky from the Mako and Arlo litter. So she'll be ahead of the curve because she's went home like a now, month before these puppies. Way but ahead until my puppy gets to be ten weeks old and then it'll catch up. <laughs> Dusky will rule them all. Yes. Yeah. You guys will have your little uh, retrieving r- competitions again, and my puppy will just sit on the shore and wait <laughs> for you guys to come back. Grit. <laughs> Grit was so lazy. She's like, she was like, I'm not the best or smart. swimmer. Yeah, she's like, I'm not as fast as them at swimming, but if I just wait here and they come back, I'll just steal the bumper from them. Perfect. It, it was fun. Solid plan, Grit. Anyway, uh, so I think that's the majority of our announcements. Um, I wish I wish you the best of luck, my friends. Braver than myself, <laughs> I know. I, I still think it's or a horrible crazier. idea, but it will allow us to produce some videos, probably. Yeah. Yep. We'll we'll let you know how it goes after the first month. How's that sound on our next live stream? Which we're kind of trying to do those approximately once a month um any more than that it just gets to be a little too much um it might be like once every three weeks it kind of just depends on scheduling and things like that however uh we'll check in and let you know how it's been going absolutely okay let's roll into answering some questions you have to look on instagram and see are there any questions through there there's a handful that there will be it's kind of hard to follow on instagram currently because it doesn't just show me comments it shows me people's that joined and checked in. So there's a lot of like activity. You see? That log, yeah. I wonder if there, I wish there was a way to like filter it or something. We'll figure that out. Ah, uh, there might be here. Let me look real quick. If you go to. No. Well, that's interesting. But I don't know how you specifically join that. So we'll do that another day. Um. Oh well, it just did something. Yeah, it popped up. Uh, oh, and new it's comments gone. will okay. display here, but I don't. I don't know how you join that. So, um, all of that being said, I know that there are some questions on YouTube. You start looking through. This is where we need a moderator, Charles, uh-huh. <coughs> to pop up with some questions when he sees them. So it says, I love those treat pouches with the open closures. I lost mine and haven't been able to find a new one. Well, we'll have them available soon. Next would be, I need better sunscreen yeah, uh, to protect my skin long term. I got gotcha. you. Hey, so, uh, hey, I, in I the daily. last year, I got Ethan to start utilizing sunscreen daily. 
So I'm doing my I'm doing my part to keep him yep. looking young. How about introducing your dogs to a baby? Um, this is an interesting one. It's a good one, but it's also an interesting one. We've had the opportunity to do this twice, and we were scared. To, uh, about as scared as you could possibly be. We did oh, very controlled. Yeah. Very. I don't want to say scared. We were just yeah, overly. I was. Okay. I had, like the dog jumping around or knocking the kid off the thing or the. That's why the, we were overly controlling of the situation. Yeah. So we just basically provided until the baby could kind of fend for itself a little bit. Very controlled interactions. Uh, none of those lean the baby against the dog pictures for us. It's one of those things that we know that dogs are not a hundred percent controllable and unpredictable things happen when you've got dogs running around for correct. sure. Correct. So we just try to to mitigate the the interactions as much as possible while allowing them to be near each other, but being there one hundred percent of the time to kind of prevent uh, any bad things from happening. Um Next question here says the oh nope no 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 question do you train your dogs to quarter a field if so how no i do not actually we do encourage them to work back and forth a little bit and we would do that with just surely walking the direction we want them to kind of trend turning and walking back in a zigzaggy pattern through the field. Um, outside of that, we try and micromanage dogs in the field as minimal as possible. The most powerful tool that we have with us on a hunt is our dog's nose. Their ability to track running birds, smell old scent, new scent, hot scent, cold scent, follow the trail of something. And if we are hacking them back and forth, they don't have the ability to do that. Now, is there some truth? I mean, it's probably a, a 50-50-esque in a sense of is the quartering pattern more effective than the free hunting dog? I would say that depends on the dog. And the dog doesn't have the opportunity to learn the free hunting, which in my opinion would be the stronger of the two methods long term unless they get the opportunity to learn birds. So that's young dogs doing young dog dumb stuff. And then by the time they get enough experience, two, three seasons in, then they're really good at finding birds. And you go, how did they How did they figure that out? Or how'd they pin that bird down? Or, whoa, I thought we walked through that and there wouldn't have ever been another bird there. <laughs> dogs locked up on point again. That is the key uh, to being ultimately successful. And that's just experience. Allowing them to figure it out. Did you find a question? I did. Okay. From Logan. This on Instagram. Timco on okay. Instagram. Hope you're still here, bud. Uh, me and my dad have purchased a pointer named Hank. He does not care about any animal or point. Do you have any pointers? No pun intended. Ha ha ha. Um, how old is the pointer? It does not say. And okay. I don't know how easy it's going to be to get that information because this is a lot of scrolling. Okay. Well, on that note, I would say that... And he also said, do you also have any tips for getting them to swim? I'll pay for y'all's services and I cannot find anything. Um, or I pay for your for y'all's services and I cannot find anything. Um, if you pay for services, are you on... Patreon? Are you a patron? Uh, if you are, please reach out to me. And I would like to get more information. And I'll try a little bit of info in regards to your dog not pointing to things. But we really need to know more information, what exposure they have or have not had. And then we need to talk through kind of just our process on how we introduce dogs to birds, try and develop natural pointing instinct. And then um, on the retrieving side of things, that just comes down to out of the water swimming, right? Sorry, not retrieving. Swimming. Typically, we need something to entice the dog, which we utilize retrieving, and that might be a higher value situation. Don't push the envelope. Get in the water with them. Encourage them to chase something that they like. And that was talking about water intro? Yep. Also, you want to wait for the weather to warm up um, for water intros. Yeah. January, yeah, great, great no point. matter where you're at, most likely, it's not the best time of year to do it. Maybe if you're deep south, but... When it's warm and the water is warm and 
and the weather is warm and you want to be in the water, your puppy's more likely going to want to get in the water with you um, and in that climate and temperature. Super chat on YouTube. Okay. Aaron, thank you again. You are a very consistent super chatter and we appreciate you. Thank you guys and happy new year. What are your favorite memories or accomplishments from the 2023 year? It's mm. a good one. Pick one. You first. Okay. So for me specifically, I'm going to say top memories that would be specifically relevant to this show are going to be this year's hunting season. That's a big one, but there's a ton of things that happen. I got to take a... Um, very dear to my heart, young string of dogs and an entire collection of Vex puppies with me. And typically when I go hunting in South Dakota, I get to bring the young dogs. This is they become proving grounds. We do some grouse hunting. We do some pheasant hunting. They kind of get the opportunity to just run around like wild banshees during grouse season. Nobody gets anything pointed until the very end of our stay. And then maybe it happens for one or two of them. It can be a little tougher to get pinned down, especially for green dogs. But every single dog I took with me pointed at least one bird, and every single dog got the opportunity to make retrieves. So check that in the box of big wins. Fast forward a little bit, we move into Ethan spends some time guiding pheasant hunts. And though the bird numbers were down a little bit, that typically is going to push us into a category of Man, I really wish I had my experienced dogs to help us actually point some birds and find some birds and retrieve some birds, but it wasn't necessary. All of the young dogs looked good. I'm talking Vale looked good. Hex, brother and sister, looked really good. Um, we also had Taylor looked really good. I'm ta- I'm saying stupid stuff, okay? A bird was shot. This is a, a fun Taylor story. And this is why it's, it's, a, it's a really favorite memories and a, a collective. But a bird was shot. They thought it went down. I'm looking at it going, that looks crippled. Three dogs run into that zone. And I don't remember exactly which three were on the ground at that. No, two. Two were on the ground. I don't remember which two specifically. But one of them for sure was Taylor. One of them for sure was Taylor, and they hit that zone, and they got birdie, and then she kind of started to head off, and I get over there thinking, uh, she oh, she it? laughed what's it, or on? what's going on? Let's find this bird. Should be close, because it looked like it was hit pretty hard, but not 100% dead. So we get up in there. Everybody said, ah, oh, it fell right here. I'm like, that's what I kind of thought. We were all in the same zone. Nothing is coming up, and I'm looking, and I'm like, that dog looks really birdie, Taylor. I start following her, and she's tracking and tracking and tracking and tracking and tracking and tracking. Locks up on point. A hen gets up. I'm like, oh, you just were following another bird. Let's go. I start to turn around. She continues on. She, like, watches the hen and goes, ah, we don't hunt those. And then <laughs> continues on. I'm, you can't make this stuff up. Continues on, tracking and tracking and tracking and tracking and tracking and tracking. Boom. And I'm like, whoa. She is right on top of something. I hustle up there. One other guy was kind of with me. I'm like, get ready. This could be another hen. This could be a rooster. I don't know what's going on. Bird tries to jump to fly. It's the crippled bird. She tracked that bird with a giant distraction of another hen that she pointed in the process almost 100 yards, maybe further. In that vicinity, though, an extremely long way, especially for an under one-year-old first-season dog, and pinned it down. Ultimately, we recover that bird then. I had to help. It kind of it took off, and everybody, the dogs are chasing it, people, all the things. And that can be a difficult thing to stay right on top of them as they're running. We recover the bird because of Taylor. That was amazing. Then you have um, Glitch. Glitch is a retrieving monster, and his sister is... Journey. Journey. I get Journey and Legacy's you, names because they look, those two dogs, you could put them right similar. next to each other, they look identical. But Close. Journey, um, sister, all five of those are little Vex puppies, and every single one of them, 
mean, Journey pointed grouse, retrieved grouse, pointed pheasants, retrieved pheasants. Glitch went to North Dakota hunted, came, and he pointed a coyote and a skunk and a fox and a porcupine. I mean, we're talking... That was just silliness, and that's what young dogs do. When he got to me, he had the opportunity to hunt hard, find a lot of pheasants, and um, I can think of specifically a walk that he pointed at least two or three. All of those dogs, I had more young dogs with. These are all developed for the Altasoro program, but or most of them, but the those Vex puppies specifically, they instantly said, oh, you don't have any seasoned dogs out here. That's our job. Got it. Check, I'm there for you. And Yeah, Hex was crazy impressive this year. And that's the kind of dog that Vex himself was. His first season, we got the opportunity. So he was uh, he was a... March puppy. A March puppy. So yeah. he'd have been right in the same realm as all of these dogs. We got the opportunity in January. So he's coming up on a year, just like all of these young dogs were in the, in the October, November time frame. And... He got the opportunity to go to Texas with me, kind of on the edge of South Texas. And this was in the peak of the maybe seven year, eight year ago quail boom. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? It was quail, uh, a giant quail boom, Oklahoma, Texas. Everybody said, we've never seen so many quail. There's more quail than the heydays and Everybody was buying bird dogs, getting back into it. We're going to be quail hunters again or, or whatever, right? I mean, there's quail to hunt. And it happened in a year, basically. And he goes down there on what was north of 60, not quite 70. I hunted one and a half days and moved 70, almost 70, probably 68. Let's make up a number here. It was in the upper 60s. Coveys of quail. Not singles, not different things, individual coveys. And I'm calling, some of these coveys might have been together as a f like 50 plus bird and split into two 25 bird coveys, something like that. None of these that I'm counting as coveys were less than eight birds, okay? I don't think anybody will have big arguments on the fact that that wasn't an individual covey, but, and he was with the the dream team at that point in time, that was Maggie and Vino. Nix. And Nix. And Shooter. I had Shooter and him and maybe one other. No, five. That's probably what I brought. I had a five dog box at that point in time. So he was the young buck. And in that 60 plus cubbies, he himself was responsible for half of them. Okay. That's ridiculous. And Especially up against the dogs that he was up against. Those yes. dogs weren't s s any sloughs. They, no. they so were really nice dogs. It was, it was very, very, very fun to hunt with all of them and to be so impressed by what that turd left as a legacy. Um, and that's just the, the collection from this year. There's a lot of other puppies that are vexed puppies out there and – grandbabies and great grandbabies and all of that that he'll continue to be able to produce and those pieces that we have to try and help build off of him um i'm proud of i'm i'm excited for and it's i think that was the best thing for me in 23 um especially after losing him last year so there you go 23 well i should not have let you go first because Nothing I can say is going to hold a candle to that, what he said. Good question, Aaron. Let's move on to the next the one. The next one. That's great. Okay, there was a question about a gun-shy dog. I kind of lost it here on Instagram. Like I said, Instagram's kind of hard to... We'll learn. We'll make it better. Scrolly. Where was it? Something about if I have a gun-shy... Oh, here it is. Bryson, 33. So I've got a one-year-old GSP and I want to hunt with him, but I'm afraid he's gun shy. If he is, can I get him to be a gun dog? You can, but you can't just go out and keep shooting and think that's going to fix it. Um, Gunfire does not fix gun sensitivity. Uh, the, Pro tip of the day. Yeah, but we've got videos out there on gunfire introductions, um, but 
the best thing that we can do to help you and to make sure that you are um, making good progress and not causing more issues is to help you via Patreon where we can watch live videos of your sessions um, as well as um, videos that you can upload for us to watch and we can go back and forth and have conversations on what you need to be doing and when you can take the next step forward or if you need to take a step back. Um, so yes, your dog can become a bird dog, a gun dog, um, even with gun sensitivity. Now we've fixed and helped lots of people from home as well as here at the kennel with, um, dogs with gun sensitivity. So do not lose hope. We can help. There's a good one here. Ian said, any info on the new Navda chapter at El Tesoro? So I don't know the full details on that. Uh, it's being headed more the Alamo by chapter. Charles just shared a post about it, I think today. Um, but really on, in, on uh, Roman Versatiles or on his page or something? Oh. Well, Char Roman Versatiles would just be Instagram. So it was Facebook and it was Charles. Okay. Okay. Let me look. Give me a second. Which that's probably thinking, what Ian saw. So thinking. it's most likely the same info that he already has. What just happened? Um, did the camera die? Yep. I don't have the camera plugged in. <laughs> Hold on, folks. Can they hear us still? Oh, oh whew. Technical difficulties. If you didn't catch it from the first time we had technical difficulties. Um but if Ian saw that Facebook post, which I'm assuming is what drove this, uh, Charles probably honestly has more information about that than we do. I do know that um, down there's chapter, um, the Al Alamo chapter, I believe, is going to have their first test at the El Tesoro Ranch the first weekend of March. Uh, it's the same weekend as Pheasant Fest. So Ethan and I are actually dividing and conquering. He's going to go to Pheasant Fest. And I'm going to go judge at El Tesoro. So I'm really excited to have a test down there. I've been down to the El Tesoro Ranch a few times, and it is phenomenal grounds. It's, a, it's an amazing opportunity. So um, if you've got a dog that you want to get tested and they have availability and you want to travel all the way down there, it would be a really amazing opportunity. Um, as well as there's going to be a um, the lodge and the – for where the judges and things are going to stay, great accommodations. Um, it's amazing that they're opening up this private branch and property for uh, a Navda chapter to go out there um, and show off some dogs. So that is all I know. I would reach out to Charles or um, the Alamo chapter Alamo specifically. Chapter specifically. Yeah. Awesome. It's, uh, hey, we got the camera back. Yeah, we're back, folks. This says uh, recommendation for treadmills for dogs as well as recommendation on wearing your dogs out in the dead cold in North Dakota. So those um, I'm going to lump together, Seth and, let's say, Kale. Is that right? Yep. So the big thing is we think about two things when we talk about wearing dogs out. First and foremost, mental stimulation. Um, I think sniffing is one of the most mentally taxing things for a dog to do something like that. There's some statistic on it. I'll look it up and I'll put some more information out there, but it is very, very, very important. So puzzle slash hide and seek type game slash work through a meal. There's a lot of varieties of things on there. Do a little Google search. We'll probably put together a video on different wearing out your dog's brain activities that you can do, especially for smart dogs like short hairs or other versatile breeds can be, or retrievers for that matter. Um, working dogs like and need to work. Um, <laughs> that pheasant looks so awful back there. It's like, hey guys, what's going on? Um, the other side of it is a treadmill is a really good way to do that as well. A treadmill requires mental focus because the dog is not moving themselves just like you are not moving yourself on a treadmill you are moving your legs and staying on the treadmill basically it's not an actual it's different than running on the ground which is the same thing for the dogs but they have to focus a lot on matching the pace and continuing to actively run 
There are a couple different types of treadmills. One that I don't have firsthand experience with, but really want to try and find a good one. Just need a good place to put it, which I don't really have right now, is a slat mill. That would be dog-powered treadmill. There are some people-powered treadmills as well. Um, But the other would be a just more standard-style belt treadmill that is electronically powered. What's that? Oh, there you go. So here's another treadmill-related comment. There's a dog pacer. Which we've seen those on Amazon and have always been like, we have the do- the Jaga Dog, so don't really need the Pacer, but it is a little more affordably priced than the Jaga Dog, as well as it folds up, so it's a little more compact. Yeah, and, and I've threatened a number of times to just, just buy one so that we could do a review for But that's people. really awesome that Kaylin um, like, has I, some... First hand, sorry. I'm yeah, no, you're fine. Has some first hand experience to share with us. Yeah, for sure. Because I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go out and buy a dog, Jaga Dog, which is what we have. That's a, com- I mean, it's a commercial unit. Not spending your money for you, but they, I think the unit that we got was almost $4,000. And that's very expensive for an individual dog when the, if there were workable, more reasonably priced options. Okay. Let's go with it that way. Um, so the dog pacer is available on Amazon, which makes it also really easy for most people out there. I will get one. I don't know exactly when, hopefully soon I'll get one. We'll test it. We'll give you the pros and cons and see if it's something that truly will work well for a large number of people, but it sounds like it's not a bad option. Long story short, runs on a treadmill can challenge the mental aspect and the physical aspect of the dogs. And they learn, I mean, they learn to love it. On average, dogs love it. Uh, Nick specifically will get on treadmill and just run on his own. He, he would a love a slap like, mill. He, yes, he would just run and run and run. Loves it, loves it, loves it. So That's um, another thing that I want to look at. That can be a really good option for, for your dogs to wear them out. And yes, treadmills are fantastic. The key of all of this is if you're going to look at a treadmill, you need to get a dog-specific treadmill because of the fact that they are more designed to allow your dog to gait properly. If you use a person treadmill, the motor is at the front. And when the motor is at the front, the dogs try and kind of shade to the front half of the treadmill. And then it shortens their gait as they keep stepping on the plastic guard for the motor and they stuff. they get really choppy. And they get choppy. And if you have a repetitive motion that isn't properly stretching and moving right, it can shorten things up to the point where it could set them up for potential injury in the future by getting too tight, too balled up in their front and not, um, not properly moving and stretching these, uh, front shoulders. Right. So get a dog specific one. If you go the treadmill route, a couple quick questions on Instagram, uh-huh. uh, Ellsworth, Olivia said, how long does a dog's heat cycle usually last in specific pointers? It really depends. Um, Dogs, if you want to compare them to people, are different, just the same in their heat cycles. Um, Some dogs, and I would say on average, uh, two to four weeks is a good average amount of heat cycle time from the moment of first blood to the time that they are no longer bleeding, Um, but they start doing things like having some discharge and some swelling happening even before they're bleeding. And then that um, bleeding can just kind of linger for a long time. Um, And then even after that, they still can sometimes have some residual swelling um, and male dogs can still be interested in them after they are out of heat completely. Um, And then one other question here, which, where did it go? It was something ah, from Kyle Munns. It said, how do y'all feel about wooden crates with metal rods for a puppy? I will tell you, I don't like wooden things for dogs. Um, if it can be destroyed, it will be destroyed, which is why, especially with young dogs and puppies, we don't typically, well, puppies will utilize like a little puppy blanket or towel for absorption um, when we're starting the crate training process in case they have a little potty accident. But if that puppy starts chewing and shredding up their towel, which they like to do at some point, um, we take that away because I don't want them to get a bowel obstruction by eating a piece of that. Now, wooden crate, It's going to be very enjoyable and satisfying for them to chew on. Uh, Dogs, they get bored, 
And when they're spending lots of time in a crate during crate training time, while you're at work or overnight and things like that, they're going to find ways to entertain themselves, which may just be destroying their crate. Even the Roughland crates that we use in the kennel, we replace those periodically, like once a year to once every two years, because even those really um, durable plastic crates, the dogs dig at and chew at and try and destroy Um The other side of the wooden crates things that I'm not as big a fan of is um, wood is really hard to seal. And so if your puppy does have a potty accident, a poop accident, the absorption into that wood is going to be really hard to clean. Whereas plastic uh, is especially these kind of, you know, non-porous plastics that crates are made out of are easy to sanitize, easy to clean, and even adult dogs, accidents will happen, whether they vomit or have diarrhea or just randomly pee still, um, it will happen, they're dogs. And so you definitely, I would not recommend a wooden crate. Folks, we have a bingo. Bingo, bango. Whoop, whoop. Let me see if I can find it here real quick. Is it oh, here it is, here it is. Bingo. It says non-alcoholic yeah. drink on deck. Yep. Punky Nixer. Single barrel bourbon. Yes, we talked about Shout it. Shout out to Patreon. Yep. And we said porcupine. porcupine. Congratulations. You are the winner of a new check cord. Pick a color, any color. And your hardware. Donna, just go ahead and send me a message on Patreon. I will send you a link that allows you to get that item shipped to you for free. Add anything else that you want in the process. The shipping should still come out free, I think. So Kyle Munz added benefit if you need. Just said, hey, I think this is a recording. Don't think they'll answer any current questions. Nope, not a recording. It's we, live. We are live, but there are lots of questions, both on Instagram and YouTube, and we're trying to scroll through them and get to as many as we can. Um, so kind of slowly but surely working our way through them, but we also will we have time have for to one more. One more. Find uh, a good one. Pull one there, and I'll pull one here. I... Ah, here we go. Question. Have you had any trouble with females getting aggressive when they're in heat? This is our girl's second heat cycle, and she has been growling and snapping at our other female dog who is fixed. Yes, that is a thing that can happen. Um, Hormones affect every creature differently, and dogs are, are no different from that. And in that situation, you can basically... See, anywhere from, we lovingly refer to them as hussies, but the, the dogs that they come into heat and they basically want to be everybody's best friend and something to breed them, to the next dog that basically doesn't want anything to come anywhere near them while they are in heat and only while they're in heat. Those personalities, I think, typically go a little bit hand in hand. They're just amplified by the heat cycle, but ultimately, yes, a heat cycle can affect that. Um, just try and keep them separate so that something, some bad blood isn't developed, which is such a thing. Dogs tend to at times hold grudges. So if something is started during this heat cycle, it could transfer to them not getting as long as uh, getting along as well out of the heat cycle. But for the most part, keep them as separate. You can, um, she's going through a lot being in heat and you don't need to push it any more than you already have. So. Okay, last question on Instagram from Tony Cavanaugh. Interested in your guys' thoughts on false points. Reggie has done amazing this year, but one area for improvement is false points. Just young dog, doing young dog things. Thanks. Actually, um, I did a podcast today with Al, is his name, and the podcast is Fat Bird Ugly Dog. Um, I don't know exactly when it will go live, but it should be not too terribly long. I, I don't know. He said he would let me know, but that was and one of the things is, um, we specifically talked about. Okay. And just so you remember, cause we talk with a lot of people, Reggie is a Lily Vex puppy. Oh, awesome. We so we're just talking up about how much we love those Vex puppies and that's uh Taylor's brother. Yep. So... The biggest thing with that is there is something to be said about it being young dogs being young dogs. Now, the key with that is we put a big emphasis with young dogs specifically in developing uh, two, two main things, one of which is the 
we say point it or knock it philosophy. And the other is knowing where your birds are in training and training with a relatively clean field for inexperienced dogs. How we do that is specifically bird launchers. This is early in this in the process. And we know exactly where they are. We also know that there's nothing else in the field for them to be distracted by smell or point. So you can ignore when they're not actively on what you know is the bird launcher in the field and it helps them to move faster through the process. The biggest thing that you um, can do wrong would be check every single time they get birdie or try and lock up and walk around and kick around or tell them whoa instantly when you think they're getting birdie, which is going to condition if I smell something, I need to stop and then dad will let me know when I can go on. So don't do those things. Only handle the birds that you know specifically where they're at. The next piece to that that we say, point it or knock it, that comes into the situation where you do have wild birds, right? I don't know where they're at. I don't know if that is, in fact, a bird or a rabbit or a pile of coyote poop. You're smelling it and potentially interested. Don't tell them, whoa. They will learn. And they will either point the bird or they will bump the bird, knock the bird. And when they bump birds, they will learn, oh, wow, that was a bird. And when they don't, they will learn, oh, wow, that was nothing. I need to keep looking for birds. The worst thing you can do is pay attention to all of the little things. And the last piece of that is, well, if they bump all the birds, how do you shoot them for them and whatever else happens? I used to be a purist as well, okay? So I'm only pointing the birds that my dog specifically points and or I'm only shooting the birds that my dog specifically points and no other birds. And my hat's off to y'all that do that, but I think you're missing a big part of young dog development, specifically here, young dog development. If your dog is three and it's busting birds, don't shoot them. But if your dog is young and they bump a few birds, shoot them. It doesn't matter. It's all experience at this category. It should be fun. You should be having fun. The dog should be having fun. And what brought me to this big realization and was guiding specifically. If I take you hunting with me and my dogs are running around and a bird gets up and you're close enough to shoot it, what are you going to do? Say, oh, I think the dog bumped that. I understand that we are purists and we don't shoot bumped birds. No, you shoot it and you go, woo woo, we killed a bird. And the dog runs over and picks it up and brings it back to me, hopefully. Or starts tracking it or learns how to exactly. use their nose more. It's all of those things work themselves out in the wash with the large majority of dogs. Yours will specifically be one of them that will have no problems. Encourage them to move on until they figure out the difference so that when they lock up on point, you can start to trust. I know there's a bird there. That's it. That's all I've got. Me too, because we are out of time. We got to get back in and send our nanny home. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this evening. I hope that the Instagrammers also had fun with this evening's chat. Looks like quite a few people rolled through that. We're going to continue to work on building that out, making it better as we go. And if we can add in Facebook as well, that would be sweet. Until next time, folks, keep an eye on the newsletter or social story posts to know when the next live will be.